It's time to write a song. First st step one. Chords. How do you make chords? Um, base it around the lowest notes in the book studio, like... Have those be the bottom notes, if you can. Like, you can use higher chords, and it's fine, but if you want to have some nice low tones, don't make a chord based around E, because that's out of the range on the bottom, so then you'd be stuck with that being your lowest note, unless you're comfortable just doing A minor and using A as the bottom note, which is fine. Let's start with F sharp. It's the lowest one we've got. So, there's a lot of options here. Uh, let's find one that we like. Go up either three or four notes from the note you choose to find a note that sounds good. Or five. Well, yeah, five works too. Let's go to three. And you can go up three or four from there. Ooh, I like that. So let's go, let's go with this chord. So let's just do the first three, let's not do the octave. F sharp minor. So we use the first, the third, and the fifth of the scale. And we get this. Nope. And then let's take this same chord, because we can. Copy paste. And let's change a note. So yeah. we can make the A and A sharp. But that's like a resolution you'd hear at like the end of a big song. Uh or we can make the C sharp go up a little bit and go up to the D. And it's like it progresses, but it doesn't end. And then we can just go back to the first one. And then it feels like it wants to go down to like two, but that's out of range. Do, do. Oh, it's a G sharp. Yeah, so it, you gotta go with like what it actually kind of feels like it wants to. In this case, it wants to go down to here, but we can't do that. So let's just have it use the same chord, but it won't have the D or the E at the bottom, which is this one. Uh, which I believe is G sharp major? I don't know chords. Okay, uh, now let's do bass. So we have our chords, but now we gotta do like the background part that you hear behind the melody and stuff. All my songs have a background part, like the, the background part is kind of like it goes and it keeps going the entire song and it helps you stay on track and not use notes that are outside of the key, which you can use notes that are outside of the key, but they don't always work. Like, we don't want to use an F here, because you've got F sharp and we've got E, so it's like, so we don't really want to use that. Also, if we look at our chords, we have a scale now. You can actually see all seven notes in, a, in the key. So, F sharp minor, we've got F sharp, and then the G sharp from the final chord, uh, A, B, C sharp, D, and E, and that goes up to F sharp. Boom! There's our key. Let's make a song! Let's do bass. Uh, what kind of song do we want to make this? It sounds like hopeful. We don't want to do like a volcano theme. Maybe we could make a vol volcano theme or something that's like... Let's do it. Let's try and make a theme using chords that don't really fit it, because we can. Uh, so we probably won't have harp at the start yet, so let's just move that later. Sure. Bass! If we want to do some, some sick bass... Don't use the third. Use the fifth and the, and the octave. So, this, this scale, or this chord, but the top note, like take the bottom note and move it up. So you get the, the F sharp and then we can use the C. And then we can also use the low F sharp and be like, okay, cool. Now that's the first note. We've done it. Let's get the rest of these chords in the bass. We've got the chords. Now let's make a bass line. Uh, let's figure like a cool rhythm. Cause like, 
the bass. This is just in 4-4 time. So, this is the beats. Uh, but let's do some sick off beats. So, it's interesting. Like, we can add more to this bass line, but for now, let's find, like, the... Like, the big accents that we're gonna have. And all of them on the beats can work. It works, but let's do something interesting. Let's move them all around and stuff. No, that one needs to move back. I wish this was in range. Now let's just make it louder. We need more bass. Let's put them down. Let's put it down here. Just so you make it louder than 100%. Make more layers and then lower the volume. So let's put these at 40% and then we play. Let's remove this low F sharp maybe. Now let's try doing a melody. This is kind of like the intro, so we don't want it to be too complex. Like, we'll probably just have one layer on top that uses no only notes from the key. And it'll it's because it's just like the intro. So we don't want it to be too insane. But we want to have, like, a melody. All you need to really worry about here is that the chords that we just set up are kind of like the notes we can use. So right here, for these three eighth notes, here, here, and here, uh, we don't really want to use a note like D that would clash with the chord we have here. Even though it's not playing for the other two eighth notes, we we want to keep it within one chord for these three beats. And then the next one, the next five eighth notes, uh, we want to keep it within this chord, roughly. You don't have to, but... It's nice to keep it for most of it. Just keep in mind, like, the way your chords are, like, divided throughout each part, so you know which notes you should be using and which notes you should kind of stay away from. There's a simple bass line to have at the beginning. So, now, what I'm gonna do, because I like having intros that are four bars, like, each of these bass drum things, each group of four is one bar here. Also, a side thing to note is that with this little melody that I came up with, melody, it's just more of the bass, really, both bars have the same rhythm despite being different notes. Like, we've got one, two, and, and four, and one, two, and, and four, and one. And, it's, and it stays with that even though it's different notes, so it's kind of catchy to have in the background. It keeps the song going even if the melody does something completely different once the harp comes in, which is this. There's our, there's our, there's our bass. Now we can do some harp. But first, let's add more percussion, because we can. Let's imagine, like, a, a sound like a tambourine. Like, let's have a tambourine! Hi-hat! After two bars, so right here, we can put a, a hi-hat on the off beats. So, two, and four, and two, and four. I really like emphasizing the back beat like this, where it's like, the the really hard hitting notes in the percussion are on two and four usually. At least in a lot of my songs that I write for Win. At least in a normal time signature you want to do that. In weird ones it's kind of different, but let's not talk about the weird time signatures. We're doing a normal song. So let's do harp. Emphasize. And now we can add some harp. But first, let's The best snare drum sound is C. The other ones are good too, I like F, but up here is really hard to use. Just stay in the lower ending, it'll be fine. Let's use B. Uh, put it on the same beat as the hi-hat, and you get a really cool snare sound that's really emphasized, and it's nice. And now let's do some harp! So let's put some low harp chords. 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 Uh, and let's just put them on these huge, emphasized bass beats, like here, and here. That 
That is the wrong chord. Now let's make a melody on top of these chords. So we want a melody that, that like, it, it accompanies the bass line. We don't want to be too insane, it's the very beginning of the song still. Uh, so let's do something catchy, but not overly complicated, only one layer, and have it usually on the same beats that the bass is hitting. And again, remember to use notes that are only in like the chord groupings that you have, so like these first three beats, the first three eighth notes here, don't use like a D. It's okay to go off of the main eighth notes though too, like we can put one in the middle here, and it'll sound cool, except not an E. Now notice we've got like an interesting sound here, uh, in the bass, on the last eighth note of the bar. So we've got the B in the bass line, and then the A in the harp. Now, this is fine for two reasons. Uh, it's creating tension right at the end of the bar, and then it is instantly resolved an eighth note later, right here. So when you land on this beat, all of the tension goes away instantly. But also, you don't hear it too... It, like, it doesn't clash very much because they're two different instruments. Now, that doesn't mean you shouldn't try and line up the harp and the bass together. Uh, most of the time you want them to be using the same chords, or the same notes, or at least something remotely similar and probably not right next to each other. But I like to create tension at the very end of each bar with notes that are closer to each other, because then it gets resolved quickly, and it still sounds good, and I don't have to change the bass part, but the melody can still do what I want it to do. It's, it's not even more, like, this note isn't really melody and it's more just like a transition that pulls you into the next bar. So here's our melody. It sounds good, but it feels like it it could use a little bit more, but we aren't going to mess with the melody, we're going to mess with the bass line, and we're going to do a really simple strategy you can use in note blocks with the low notes to make stuff sound more full. Let's take our, our low F sharp that we used in most of these chords, and put it on all of these, on every single eighth note, but we aren't going to make it, we aren't going to emphasize it on these lower, quieter layers like the rest of it. And then in this part with the chord switches, we're going to switch up to match it, move this note out of the way, and then we can just copy-paste that to the next part, and now we've got... It sounds good. You can do that, you don't have to. I like to do it in some songs and not in others. It just is your call. Now for the next part. I like to copy this same melody that we already used, repeat it, but now we're going to add more notes to each of these parts of the melody with only one note. Like here. Uh, so we're going to go down in this chord. So it goes F sharp, C sharp, A, F sharp. So below this F sharp, we're going to use a C sharp, but harp. And then below the A, we're going to use the F sharp. Let's add a note here too, like we can change it up a little bit, let's add some more notes. Let's try it, let's go with it, if it doesn't work, we can change it. But there's no harm in going back and changing things if you don't like the way they sound. But we, we, we can try some things. Music is hard, music is complicated, you don't always have to follow the rules. There aren't really rules, there are, but they're stupid. Don't follow the rules. And then the epic major or er, minor, the epic chord accent. The last thing to make this part feel more exciting. It's just, it's just the same part but with more. So let's do more. Let's make the percussion better. Let's take like a higher hi hat. How about this note? Sure. 
uh, where does coming it comes in here? Now let's put it on these eighth notes that don't fall on the beat. But let's leave out the last one. Play around with the percussion. The percussion doesn't need to match in pitch, so you can just do some fun things with the rhythm. Let's see how this sounds. That sounds good, but it does feel a bit empty when there's not the hi-hat on the last eighth note of the bar. So let's fill that space with another percussion instrument, the bass drum. We don't really do this with the snare because the snare is too hard hitting, especially with the resource pack to be extremely useful in these transitions most of the time. But we can fill the space with the bass drum. Let's make it go up higher to like this one and then kind of roll back down. But let's not do it every bar, because then it'll just get overused. So let's do it at the end of every second bar. We'll use that. And then in the other ones, we'll just do... We won't have the G sharp. We'll just have, like, the higher one, but we won't have it roll back down. It'll just be one hit. And so now we've got a percussion track that looks like this. And we've got a new part that sounds like this. Now, let's change the tone. AKA, let's not bother making another melody and let's just do some really big chords and cut out a bunch of the bass. But like, we'll have a lot of bass, but only where the harp hits. We aren't gonna have it filling space in or else. It's gonna be the time for huge chords and percussion. How do we change the tone? Uh, let's take this bass part that we have, but only the actual melody thing and not the extra notes. Or only the actual... Let's take only the... Let's take only the hard-hitting beats from the bass line uh, and paste them over here. And then let's take this layer and copy it down and then change it to the harp. Now we aren't going to leave it like this. Because there's some of these chords feel empty. Uh, and we can do more with them in the harp. We can leave the bass as it is, except let's... Add the low note back to this one. And let's add a high B to this one to match the lower note. But then we're going to change the E to the G sharp. Because right now we've got the first the third in the octave, and, well, it works. We could also do this. Oh, actually, I lied. The chord is based on G-sharp, so this is the third, the fifth, and then the octave of the third. So, this is the better option. Um, huh, not expecting that. Uh, so now we've got some hard-hitting bass beats. And now let's do more with these harp chords. Let's add the third to all these chords. So A, 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 and then, well, G sharp is here. Ugh! What if we give these chords an echo? Okay, so how do you do echoes? Uh, let's copy our melody here. Melody, it's just huge chords, but it counts. Uh, and then put it slightly after. So let's do an eighth note after where it actually plays. And then let's take all these layers and put them down to like 40% or 30% or 50. 40. And now let's try it. Now, that works and I like it, but it feels like the echo ends too soon. So let's do one more. Uh, and this one will set down to 20%. And let's just put it below this part.
let's do one more part and then we'll do the ending. Let's take this percussion track and then we'll take this other percussion track from earlier that's slightly different. Now, we're getting a few extra notes added, but it's nothing insane. But now we're just combining both parts and we get something fun out of it. Let's take the bass part from before. And now, it's time for the end. And now, we'll just get this new percussion part. Don't worry, we're going to do more than just copy-paste the same thing. We're going to add higher parts to this melody. So we can take this second portion, where we already added a higher part, and we can make this the first part instead. We're going to do some, high, some new higher parts in the harp at the very end right here. Also, the echoes make it sound weird when you just isolate a chord, like... But when you play it in context... It's fine. So, high parts. I will remove the echo in this last hit and instead just do a copy of the chord on the 40% to make it louder, because we don't want to be any hope of clashing in the very last beat of the song. There's actually seven notes we can do here, because we're missing this A. I'm gonna have a 100% and a 40%, just like all the others, just to have that A in the chord. So now let's listen to it from the start. And that's how you write Numplux.